says Michael Popak, Legal AF. Well, I'm not done trying to keep track of Donald Trump's lawyers. He's just hired a new one. And that lawyer's name is Joe Tacopina. You probably know him from his appearances on Fox News and as a legal correspondent. He's a bulldog litigator, a uh, obviously a right-wing Republican. He's represented people like Jay-Z, but more importantly to Donald Trump, he's represented Sean Hannity in the Dominion trial and represented his son's girlfriend, Don Jr.'s girlfriend, Kimberly Guilfoyle, when she had to go testify before the Jan 6 committee. So it's that Joe Tacopino. Why am I even talking about him? Why am I keep trying to keep track of all the lawyers that Donald Trump has to hire for all the criminal and civil lawsuits and problems and criminal investigations and prosecutions around the country? Because we have a new issue. Donald Trump doesn't like the fact that Mark Pomerantz, who along with Carrie Dunn had been a special prosecutor, left private practice, became a special prosecutor in the Manhattan DA's office, working first under Cy Vance, but then under a new, a newly installed Manhattan DA a year ago named Alvin Bragg, you might have heard about. And when they didn't like the fact that Alvin Bragg, after 90 days in office, didn't want to follow through with, at that moment with their recommendation of a prosecution of Donald Trump, Pomerantz and Dunce hit the exit, but in a very noisy fashion, very unusual fashion, wrote a letter of resignation. It got leaked to the New York Times and laid out their case against Donald Trump and why they were so pissed off at this young, fledgling prosecutor, Alvin Bragg, who literally had not even gotten his his sea legs under him in 90 days. And now they were dissing him on national and international television saying he doesn't have the brass ones to prosecute Donald Trump. Let's leave that issue aside for another hot take. But, you know, they didn't like their boss and they walked out the door. Now, Carrie Dunn and Mark Pomerantz have formed Uh, a law firm. You know, they're going to do this kind of public interest law. Good for them, good on them. But then Mark Pomerantz is going to write a memoir. And we've talked about this on Legal AF with one of my colleagues, Karen Friedman at Niffalo, who used to be the number two in that office. And we have some strongly worded opinions about Mark Pomerantz kind of breaching his, potentially breaching his ethics, potentially breaching the grand jury secrecy that goes around all of the information that he learned to write his book. The book being called the people versus Donald Trump. It's one thing for like me or Ben Mycellus or Karen Friedman at Niffalo to to hypothecate, to write something about surmise and conjecture, a hypothetical about a case against Donald Trump based on our understanding of the law, or the Brookings Institute writing a, you know, 500-page updated report that lays out the case against Donald Trump. That's one thing. For the prosecutor who was privy to all the insider information, the grand jury testimony, the evidence, the witness testimony, none of which has been made public, to then write a book about it, that's potentially troubling, even for people on this side of the aisle. So let's put that aside for a minute. And we might have Pomerantz and Dunn, hopefully one day on on Legal AF for a full interview. But for this hot takes purposes, why am I talking about Takapina? Why am I talking about Pomerantz? Because as we reported earlier, when Pomerantz's publisher, Simon & Schuster, announced that they were going to be publishing this memoir next month in February. Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg's general counsel wrote a strong letter two weeks ago telling them, we don't think you can do that. We think it violates all the non-disclosure agreements, professional ethics, grand jury secrecy rules that Mr. Pomerantz was under. But more importantly, we've never seen the book. You need to show us a draft of it because he left a year ago and he doesn't know about this ongoing criminal investigation of Donald Trump that we're still doing in the office. In other words, Mr. Pomerantz may have left the office, but the office did not leave the investigation of Donald Trump. But your data, your information, your knowledge is stale, Mr. Pomerantz. This is the gist of the letter from the Manhattan DA's office. And you shouldn't publish what you're about to publish because you don't know how the wheels of justice have turned. Okay, that was reporting. We reported on that. They did not move... Uh, the Manhattan DA's office did not run into court, did not file criminal charges against Pomerantz, did not move for an injunction yet. And it'll be very difficult for them to stop the publication of the book under constitutional First Amendment principles of what we call prior restraint. I'll talk about it on another hot take. But for now, you got a really nasty letter, strongly worded letter, you know, F you, letter to follow, Manhattan DA's office to Simon & Schuster. Well, Donald Trump reads... And his lawyers read. So they saw the letter and they decided to piggyback on it. And he went out and hired his son's girlfriend's attorney, Joe Tacopina, who wrote a very strongly worded letter. We'll put it up on the screen. 
to Mr. Pomerantz at his new law firm and said, basically, how dare you? And stand warned and pick up a weapon. You know, it's like, I feel like I'm watching, I'm reading Game of Thrones. Um, but basically said, you're committing defamation against my client because you have unknown facts that only you would have as a prosecutor. And you're, you're then rendering an opinion that charges my client with a crime in public, in writing, libel and defamation, and cites a couple of cases under New York and federal law for those concepts. I mean, the, the cases stand for the proposition that they say they stand for. We've never seen the book, so we don't know exactly how Pomerantz threads the needle, right? Puts the camel through the eye of the needle of not violating his professional ethics, his non-disclosure agreement, his grand jury secrecy, secrecy obligations of protection, and wrote a book. But we don't know yet. We're shadow boxing here a little bit. You know, good on Mr. Pomerantz thinks he could write a book based on his three years of giving up his life to focus on Donald Trump, but jury's still out to use the vernacular as to whether he did that properly. And so Donald Trump's lawyer, the bulldog that he is, wrote a very aggressive letter and said, uh, you know, listen to these words very carefully, or words to that effect. Uh, you know, read the next few words very carefully. If you do this, we will sue you for defamation and your publisher as well. Look, what he's trying to do is to have, you know, he's trying to call a meeting at Simon & Schuster, you know, immediate, immediate triage meeting, not involving Donald Trump, in which they and their lawyers, and look, Simon & Schuster has in-house lawyers that are liable and defamation experts. They have outside lawyers that do this for a living. There's a whole cottage industry that supports the news media and First Amendment and First Amendment reporting to make sure that stories that are going to be published, whether in newspapers, online, or in books in this case, aren't going to subject the publisher to major financial damages and exposure. You can't avoid the suit if Donald Trump wants to sue. He'll sue. He sued everybody else. As, as, as Judge Middlebrooks in his recent sanctions order against Alina Haba and Donald Trump for a million dollars down in Florida just reported in outlining all of the meritless litigation that Donald Trump has pursued around the country. He sued Twitter. He sued CNN. He sued the Pulitzer Prize Board. Um, he, he, there, there's not an entity he hasn't sued. So you can't stop the suit. But from a risk assessment standpoint, and I've sort of been in that position as an in-house counsel, you're trying to figure out if, if, the, if the risk is worth it, right? If, if your business model is to publish, should you publish? Is the risk worth it? And what is our exposure for this? So the, pres presumably that manuscript was pretty pressure tested and scrubbed by a libel First Amendment defamation team of lawyers inside Simon & Schuster and externally, which gave them the confidence to announce the publication in February. I mean, they don't, do, they don't take these steps lightly. And Takapina, who's looking for publicity, you know, when he's not running around being a soccer executive in, in Europe, he shows up on places like Hannity and Tucker Carlson and other Fox News, or he's a, a correspondent sent to Italy to, to cover, uh, you know, the Amanda Knox trial or something like that, or he's defending a rapper about something. I get it. You know, if you're going to hire somebody, I'm actually surprised that Trump didn't hire somebody like Takapina earlier. He's, he sort of picked his moments, right? I don't know if Joe has heard, there's a really serious criminal trial uh, that, that went on against this client and led to a 17-count conviction just up the street. I guess he sort of missed that and decided he didn't want to put his hands into that ringer. So he avoided that. And I don't know if Joe's heard, but there's a pretty extensive civil fraud case, disgorgement, and could give the death penalty to Trump's main organization for making money besides his Save America PAC and all the grifting he does through that. And I don't see Joe Tacopina stepping in and tapping out Alina Haba and saying, I got this. So, you know, it's easy to, light, to write a letter. I've written thousands of them like this one in my career. You know how many cases I have settled as a result of writing a letter like this one? I can count on half a hand how many times, and I'm a very good letter writer, how many times a letter like that has led to a settlement, a negotiated a resolution, the, uh, I was able to accomplish the thing that I demanded, no matter how much I pounded my chest and beat my, you know, pull, pulled up my sword or unzipped my fly or whatever Joe's doing in the letter. You know, it's not written for that purpose. It's written for the purpose that, you know, 
Fox News will now report on it today or tomorrow, or they have already. They'll put up the letter. Joe gets free publicity, a couple of million dollars worth. But look, he's picking his, he's picking and choosing, right? He's a reasonably successful criminal defense lawyer. But he hasn't been involved and won't be involved in the most major events in his client's life. I mean, they always say that you want as a lawyer to be consulted and hired for the most important matters, business, financial, political, whatever, legal, in your client's life. Because if you're not, you, you know where you kind of sit in the spectrum, in the hierarchy of your client. I don't see Joe involved with the things that should matter to him. Donald Trump doesn't care about the Trump organization being given the death penalty. Trump didn't care about 17 felony convictions for tax evasion, another fraud in the state of New York, just up the street. Um, I think he does. And so I think we should take with a grain of salt the newfound appearance and chest pounding of Joe Tacopina in his letter writing campaign, which is, which is not what you do in a courtroom and not what you can get away with. This is, this is a media play only for Donald Trump to try to grab the news cycle or at least get a push in the news cycle while he goes and fends off other things. I'm just surprised that Donald Trump doesn't hire somebody of Joe's stature to handle his really important matters and continue continues to rely and lean on Alina Haba, who's yet to win one one case or matter she's been retained for. In fact, she's lost every one and has now been sanctioned over a million dollars by a judge down in Florida and with more to come. So that's the reporting for today. Donald Trump hires Joe Tacopina. Joe Tacopina writes a letter attacking Mark Pomerantz, former special assistant district attorney, Manhattan DA's office, who wrote a book about to be published by Simon & Schuster called The People vs. Donald Trump. Michael Popak, Legal AF Reporting. Our blue wall stopped the red wave and election deniers got denied election. That's why we're celebrating with the new Democracy Prevails team. We've got lots of work to do, but we should all be proud that when democracy was tested, democracy prevailed. You've earned this. Don't wait. Get yours right now at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.